Let's go back to the Milken Conference in Los Angeles, where Bloomberg Special Correspondent Willow Bay is standing by with Alan Schwartz, the last chairman and CEO of Bear Stearns, before it collapsed three years ago. He's now executive chairman of the financial services firm Guggenheim Partners. Willow? Hi, Mark. Thank you. Alan, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having uh, me. Your company, Guggenheim, made some news today that uh, our Bloomberg reporter, Christina Aleshi, uh, brought on the air earlier that you all have submitted a bid for Warner Music with Sony and ATV. Um, this bidding is now getting rather heated. Len Blavatnik and the Goris brothers are, are in the mix. Um, in the $3 billion and change range, is there a ceiling at, at which you drop out? There's always a ceiling at which you drop out, and if it came from a Bloomberg reporter, I'm sure it's true, but uh, I can't really comment on something that's not public yet. But what would be the play here? What is the value of Warner Music? Is it really a technology play on the future of cloud computing and the potential it offers to download music onto our mobile devices and to make that process a lot easier? I think it's two things. Remember, Warner Music has two things, music publishing and uh, recorded music. I think the music publishing business is actually in a growth trend already, and I think the bet on recorded music is that the conversion over to digital, you've had to go through that cycle, and now as you come out of it, I think it's both all the new devices plus all the new geographies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of new consumers coming into the world in the emerging markets. When would you expect to hear from the board on these competing bids? They'll have to tell us. So, you're a deal guy. Can you give us a sense of or characterize the M&A market right now? Yeah, I think the M&A market, uh, we had talked at the beginning of the year, we thought it would get more active. It is. Uh, I think a lot of people point to the cash on companies' balance sheets, which uh, certainly companies accumulated a lot of cash through the crisis. Uh, I'd say cash on the balance sheets is something that supports M&A, but it doesn't drive m and I think the drivers of M&A are industry by industry specific, but I would say the one thing that I see is that as opposed to, let's say, over the last several decades, we saw a lot of horizontal mergers, just two companies that are similar, got together, reduced costs, and, and went forward. I think now you're seeing much more of shifting business model types of you know, The world is changing and forcing you to think, do I have all the right products? Do I have all the right capabilities in my product? So we're seeing more M&A that is looking to build out your business model as opposed to just put two similar companies and together. So in, ter you know, in terms of your client mix, what sectors are likely um, to be particularly active? Um, well, I think technology is active uh, quite a bit. I think telecommunications will continue to be. I think we're going to start to see more in media. Uh, and, and I think all of the natural resources, are, I, I think, are going to be very, very strong, and, and as well as the industrial sector. And what, it, where's private equity fitting in to all of this? It's usually tracking the M&A uh, climate, but is that still the case in this latest Yeah, week? I think private equity, I think uh, several things. One, they're, they're liquid, liquefying a bunch of the investments they made in the past cycle. You're seeing a lot of them go public. They've got new, new uh, cash to invest. I think the high-yield bond market is uh, wide open again. You know, yields are down to the lowest levels in a long time. Uh, so the money is available, but they are being cautious. I think from the last cycle, they saw when, you know, there was that much debt available, you didn't necessarily want to borrow it. So I think... So there have really been lessons learned. There have been lessons learned. And I also think that what we saw in the last cycle where private equity was doing all the buying and, and strategics weren't, because they were afraid to take on the debt. Now that strategics have built up their balances, you're, I think you're going to see more of a balance between those two, and private equity being more targeted. So given, given the backdrop of the economic recovery and, frankly, changes in regulatory reform, I know that you've been very active at building Guggenheim Partners. So where are you seeing the opportunities? We see opportunities across the board. A lot of what I'm focusing on is building out uh, a full-service investment bank on the Guggenheim platform. So we have almost all areas of fixed income, sales, trading, and research. We have a repo business to lend against the securities that we trade. We have equity, sales, trading, and research. We have M&A, and we have uh, underwriting. So we're one of the few sort of emerging firms that aren't just participating in one of the business lines, but building a firm around all of those business lines, which I think is an opportunity. 
And then we're continuing to build out our asset management business, wealth management, and we've started an insurance company that we're excited about. So we've got a lot going a on. Busy. So uh, something that's come up in several of the panels here, um, not specifically related related to your industry, but to corporate America more broadly, there's an unprecedented amount of cash out there on balance sheets. When is that cash to really get to work and help this country turn around its jobs prices? Right. So I think that uh, it's a very good question. I think I think we are starting to see some of it. I think you see it in certain areas. As I said, M&A is driven more by growth than it is by cost cutting or letting go of people. But I think it's it's bound up and then there's an interplay. You know, people on the business side want to say government's the, the problem. People on government say business is the problem. It actually has to work hand in glove, right? We need policy, uh, not, if not certainty, some sort of guidelines to say, this is the way we're going. If we came out with a plan, say, this is how you'll be taxed in the future. This is the kinds of regulations that we're likely to see. These are where tax credits are going to be in. People seeing a five or 10 year period, you can't invest around regime uncertainty, right. as they say. Alan Schwartz, Guggenheim Partners, always great to have you with us. Thank Thanks. you. Mark, back to you. Willow, Mr. Schwartz, thank you both so much.